Hello everyone, welcome to strategic management unit number five. In unit number five, we're going to be talking about competitive rivalry and those dynamics of competition. So um, in this unit, in this unit, we're going to be talking about how companies compete for a certain market and how that rivalry works. You're pretty familiar with this topic already because you know that there's always competition between the brands that you consume from day to day, no? I mean, um, when you say, well, Nike, Adidas, or Under Armour, or Boeing, or Airbus, Pepsi, or Coke, etc. And as much as it sounds a simple a simple topic, it, it has a lot of implications because in the end, we need to think strategically as what 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 resources we have internally in order for us to react to that competition. Sometimes we can react just with marketing. Sometimes we have to react with superior products. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that. In this case, for example, um, let's look at the unit number one. And unit number one is this slide. You can watch this video between the competition of Boeing and Airbus. I think this is a pretty distinctive uh, um, competition. Because we're talking about, um, we're talking about a product that is very difficult to make. It has a lot of things to consider in terms of electronics, dynamics, engineering, R and D, etc., 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 and they are very costly. But the market is very little. We have to understand that, I mean, regardless, there's 300 airlines. They don't buy an airplane every month. Sure, there's rotation of airplanes. But in the end, um, what they are looking is always for a superior product in terms of, like, for example, fuel, fuel saving. And if there's any other innovation that is also in regards to comfort. You know, when we have, for example, the airplane that was a double-decker, that was a very good innovation because for airlines, that meant that, in in markets where they needed higher volume, I mean, if you're going to fly Trans-Pacific, let's say from Australia to New York, you want to bring as many passengers as you can, right? Because in the end, you're going to be already doing that round. So uh, with the double-decker, it was doubled, almost tripled the capacity of a normal plane, right? So again, this goes together, this, this, this rivalry goes together also with the profile of the customer which in this case we're talking about the airlines so for some airlines it was like i okay i need to bring volume but for some other was i want to save fuel and so that is their response for example with a dreamliner no the dreamliner is an airplane that is more fuel efficient in this case they're saying well rather than being bringing more volume i try to make it more efficient so i save more money uh again different airlines will have a different approach to this and their consumption of the product will be much much different so again these are the responses in this case like i said uh, we cannot just say i'm gonna come up with a big airplane and that's it no you have to think okay what is my strategy what airplanes are they are looking at the macro environment of the competition and say what airlines are really looking for so do we want to go for engineering of a larger airplane or a more efficient airplane they already knew what they had in their plans in this competition. So when when uh, when this when the Airbus had a double decker, Boeing had a response and say, okay, so what are we gonna do right now? Are we gonna spend all our time and resources in order to match that kind of technology, or we aim for another segment of the market, which is more fuel efficiency? So in this case, again, you see how no. The responses are not always in terms of um, always in terms of going for the same market. Sometimes go for the same market. Sometimes don't. Right. Uh, yeah. So let's look at some definitions in this case, and let's look at that competition. Notes in this case we have the competitors. We have for that specific market we have Airbus, we have Boeing, we have Embraer, which is a Brazilian. We have Bombardier, which is a Canadian one. Uh, we have this one's Lockheed Martin, Lockheed Martin, the UK UK competitor. 
but again, they go for different markets. When we talk about Embraer, when we talk about Lockheed Martin, Lockheed Martin is more in the production of airplanes, but more in the military airplanes. They do have commercial airplanes as well, but they are on a smaller scale, the same as Embraer. So in this case, again, we can have direct competitors and indirect competitors for some areas. We may have the competition, Boeing, Airbus, they are the main ones, but maybe for smaller airplanes, then the other places start to come in. So those are the competitors, direct and indirect. Sometimes yeah, sometimes if we talk about, for example, train, it can be a di indirect competitor. In Korea, for example, here, uh, trains is, is a large market for trains. I mean, of course, I mean, it doesn't replace the airplane because we cannot fly to other countries, but uh, in some certain areas or markets, it's, it's, it's different. Right. So we talk about, we already talked about the competitive behavior. So the competitive behavior and the rivalry as well is the action and reaction. I do something, the other company reacts to it. And then, of course, the reaction might be more strategic. It can be just in marketing. Sometimes, sometimes I don't come up with a new product. I just redesign the marketing to make it more efficient. We have also a multi-market competition. In this case, for example, for those two brands, Airbus and Boeing, yes, it's a multi-market competition because, I mean, they compete with different airlines that mostly all the airlines have from different countries. It's hard to say that they compete in a single market, just in the American market or Canadian market or Brazilian market. No, no. And, of course, we have the competitive dynamics, which is a total set of actions and responses. So, in this case, we're talking about all the companies competing. If in this case we will say Lockheed Martin uh, is going to develop bigger airplanes that perhaps use the technology, the military technology. So we're 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 thinking of a very new dynamic, no, of uh, of uh, producing airplanes. So uh, this could make a shift in the in the industry and change the industry for in in a very different direction. No, maybe now they are thinking how to design airplanes that perhaps cope with this COVID-19 more privacy or something. Yeah? Very good. So in this case, well, we have just a diagram and I'm not going to go through it because in the end is what we're going to be talking about now. So in this case, the, um, a, the model of competitive rivalry states that competition is good because in the end, if someone is setting the benchmark, we have uh, uh, companies that are striving and pushing to uh, be better, be best all the time and have the higher uh higher market share right and again in this case firms are mutually interdependent because they all share resources in the end i mean although they are competitors there might be some engines some things that both share you know when we talk about for example a rolls royce rolls royce produce some engines for airplanes right uh, so in this case they might be serving both companies so they are dependent, interdependent in some certain way, and they are interdependent to generate better competition. Again, this rivalry is usually dynamic and complex because we, I cannot just say, in this case, for example, and we're going to talk about slow markets later, this is a very slow market. We're talking about that, like I said, airplanes don't buy airplanes, airlines don't buy airplanes every single day. They buy them in a span of 10, 15 years. So in this case, um, when you redesign or when you think of the next, next product you're going to launch, you're going to try to capture the market for the next 10 or 15 years because it's a slow market. So in this case, it's very complex because I need to think, how am I going to use my resources to gain a competitive advantage for the next 10 or 15 years until we see another, another how to say, another round of buying airplanes, All right? So in this case, we have to think of, how we use those core competencies. In this case, from both airlines, the core competencies is R&D, the research and development, right? And how they carry it, how much it costs for them, and how are they are using to their best experience, resources, etc. And also the same thing as a connection or alliances with airlines. We have to understand that these two companies already have a, a complex agreements with, with, uh, with uh, airlines because some airlines, buy the planes but they get servicing from them so um it is not like i'm just gonna switch to airbus because i don't like your airplane anymore <laughs> it doesn't work that way sometimes they need to 
they need to uh, fulfill the agreements, contracts, etc., and fix the airplanes for a certain period, and then you can change to another airline, to, to another a, another company of airplanes, to in order to purchase the airplanes, right? So in this case, we have uh, the market commonality, which is in each industry composed of various markets. Uh, which can be some divided into segments. So in this case, I can say production of airplanes. But in the production of airplanes, there's many different ones. There's also uh, jets, smaller ones, much much smaller ones. The medium range, like I said, the Embraer uh, or the Bombardier or so. We have the larger airplanes. We have military airplanes. So we have many different ones. When we talk about military airplanes, Airbus and Boeing, they are not there. They, they don't produce those those airplanes, right? So, uh, again, each one specializes in their each area of the market when they think of how they can do it. So, in this case, when we talk about resource similarity, which talk about tangible and intangible resources, we always talk about the same thing. The financial, the connections to the suppliers of the engines, of the materials. He probably, they, like I said, they share a lot of the suppliers. And in the end, he, this goes together with what we discussed the last, the last session with, uh, the, with the Porter's Five Forces. So in this case, who also has the power of the suppliers or the buyers? There's very few suppliers for them. And of course, they will control the prices of the things in which both um, airplane factories or all of them may get affected. So in this case, um, there's three drivers of competitor behavior. So he, all the companies in this airplane production are aware of who are their competitors, what they do. They have a motivation to do it because they know that this market generates a lot of money. And of course, they have the ability to, to, to chase it. If I were to say, well, going back to the Porter's Five Forces, in this kind of market, what is the probability of having a new entrant? So they say, I want to create a new airplane, a new airplane, let's say, brand, right? So I want to create a new airplane brand. Can I do it? Again, we go back, there's a few suppliers. So are they willing to supply to you? Maybe because they already have some exclusivity with Air Boeing and Boys and uh, uh, Air Boys, <laughs> Airbus and Boeing and Lockheed and all of them. They already have their agreements. So maybe you you cannot do it that easily. You don't have the expertise. You don't have the knowledge. So entering this market is going to be very, very, very difficult. So I don't have the ability unless I have tons of capital. As a case of Tesla, when we think of Tesla, they didn't have that ability to compete with, with other car manufacturers, but little by little they did it. So this is precisely something that if we want to be an airplane producer, then we have to think of how slowly we're going to bring some competitive advantage. In this case, what happens if we deliver um, electric, electric planes, which is, uh, it has been spoken about before, but not, it's, not, it's not developed. I mean, I mean still requires too much energy to do it and then of course it's not feasible or possible yet but i mean who knows it could be you know so uh, like i said in this case we have other things that influence the, the resources similarity so in this case we have to understand uh we have to understand that we have difference in resources so when we have difference in resources, this creates a very big issue because sometimes we cannot we cannot respond to a certain action. Why we cannot respond? Because we have strategic inertia, right? If we set up to, let's say, we're going to make a fuel efficient airplane and that's going to take us around the of five years and develop that product is going to take me another five years, total 10. I cannot stop in the middle and say, okay, guys, let's produce something different no okay sorry the other airplane is make the other airline is the other manufacturer is making too much money with their high capacity so instead of focusing on fuel efficiency we're going to change it no you cannot do that companies like this ones they have so much inertia that they cannot change what they are doing just just because the market dictated that uh, they want something else so they must have a way to finish that cycle 
they must find a way to say, okay, let's try to market these airplanes in a certain way that at least we are not at a loss. So rather than focusing on being the leader, we're going to focus on not having losses. And again, that's that's because of the external market. The external market also sometimes it dictates uh, our strategy, right? So in this case, like I said, we have precisely those strategic actions and responses. No, so in this case, I will, as I was saying just now, it's difficult to implement and reverse, right? In this case, a strategic action it takes many years. If I'm gonna say I'm gonna set all my strategy to focus on fuel efficiency that means i have to hire engineers i have to have machines i have to focus my whole industry or my whole manufacturing into saying we focus on fuel efficiency now as i was saying maybe that strategy is not working so in this case i have tactical actions in this case a tactical action will be a marketing strategy that perhaps focuses more on just trying to sell those airplanes that i'm already producing under that strategic action that I took. So the actions itself, they are not easy to change, but some responses are easy to maneuver and change. Okay, so very good. Now, see, so yeah, I'm going to go back here, for example, with the competitor analysis. So here, for example, we have most valuable players on the luxury market. So we can see how they use their resources and they have very similar products. But at the end, they also, um, we have resources similarity. We cannot say that Louis Vuitton has the same thing as Cartier. They go for different things, different markets. Yes, they are on the luxury market, but they sell different things. So we have to understand that very well too. Yeah. So very good. Here also, we're talking about the competitive rivalry. We see, for example, Samsung, Huawei, Apple, Xiaomi, Vivo, and Oppo. We have, we can see how some of them are growing. Some of them are going down, right? So in this case, um, what kind of competitors, what kind of actions you want? When we look at, for example, Huawei, right? Let's look at Huawei. You see how their market has increased. Why? Because in the end, they started with the strategy of going to a lower market, but in the end, they changed to pursue also and compete also with Samsung and Apple. They changed Huawei and Xiaomi changed their strategy. Xiaomi still continues more on the cheaper end, but still they do it, right? Very good. So again, we have three possible of uh, likelihood response whenever we have an attack, right? So we have always first mover incentives. The first mover incentive means I am the first one to develop, let's say, for example, Nike Air, right? So what is what are these guys are going to do? Maybe I'm going to do the Under Armour Bounce. Maybe I'm going to do the Adidas Lunar Jump or something like that. So in this case, whoever has first the idea, of course, gains that. Nike Air is already well-developed. It started back in the 90s. And of course, uh, they try to, some other companies try to copy their products, but in the end, they have the advantage of the first uh, mover incentive. Well, the response, the likelihood that they will respond, in this case, these companies can respond because of the organizational size that they have. They have grown to a certain size that they can respond to Nike and even develop better products. And of course, they will uh, have the quality to do it. Um, another thing is a, we have the types and effectiveness of the competitive actions. These companies do have the ability to tackle each other with different actions. They can go for different products, different things, e, something that uh, try new, try new markets. For example, let me give you a very good example here, uh, that happened a couple of years. Uh, when we're talking about hockey, ice hockey equipment, there were brands for example, there, the, the, the CCM or Bauer, and they were focusing on, on that specific market, the ice hockey, you know, and actually they still dominate it. And Nike and Adidas started to go in and say, okay, maybe I will develop this Nike skates and this Nike hockey stick and, and all of the gear, of course. And of course, in this case, when we talked about the actor's reputation, they were able to go in because they were Nike. So why not? I mean, why not buy gear that is Nike made? Of course, for the hockey players, 
uh, they knew that other brands were superior because they had the experience. Yes, this Nike had a competitive advantage in terms of having being the brand, but they still had to go way long in order to compete with them. Right? Very good. So now let's talk about market cycles. So in this case, first of all, let's talk about slow market cycles. In this case, it's very simple. When we're talking about, for example, uh, products that take very long to be copied, to be substituted, and they can keep the competitive advantage for longer periods of time. Right. So in this case, when we talk about, a, for example, pharmaceuticals, when you get a certain pharmaceutical to work, it then takes 10, 10, 15 years to be developed, approved, tested, etc. Now with Corona, that's another story, but uh, it's pushed very quickly in one year, but that usually doesn't happen. Same thing as for airplanes, right? So in this case, um, our organizational structure should be effectively to support those efforts, that strategy that goes for the slow so market, right? We have here the slow market. We have how time, 10 years, launch, exploitation, and the counter attack, it goes down. So um, until here, we have to be, we have to be very attentive. Okay. In every single, in every single one, we have to, we need to have, uh, I cannot read, sorry. Let me wait, let me go back. So in this case, until this line before the counter attack, we have to make sure we we squeeze as much profits as we can because in the counter attack, there will be companies already coming and then we have to deal with that, okay? Very good. Uh, this one, for example, mm -hmm. uh, here I'm talking about a slow market that changed. Uh, you can see how uh, the music industry was disrupted by technology and that's something that is happening nowadays there were many markets that were slow markets were well protected but because of the because of technology this has changed so i want you to give you a check to that fast cycle markets we have here for example electronics constantly moving there is nobody some consumers are not uh, loyal to their brands they change it continually improving, continually attacking. So in this case, for example, we have a very big issue because the cycles are too slow, too slow, too quick. Cycle, cycle, every year, every year. I mean, this one is 15 years, but actually we're talking about um, a Samsung, mostly a phone is two years, right? So in this case, it becomes a problem because we also start to cannibalize our own products. So in this case, for example, I have the Galaxy S9, versus Galaxy S10. So eh, because it developed too quickly, there's still people that come and say, why should I buy the nine if already the 10 is in the market, right? So I rather not buy the nine. So in this case, eh, for these quick markets, we have to make sure that we get the profit, we squeeze the profit as much as we can and we cover all the R&D expenses. That means marketing. Push it, push it, sell as many units as you can, as quickly as you can, so that uh, you don't uh, you are, you don't end up with a product that didn't sell. And that happens a lot. Like for example, LG. LG struggles a lot with that because they have a lot of unsold products. Because in the end, they, their products, though they try to be superior, they are not. Example of the new smartphone now, it's, the one, it's attached in front of it. No? They were firstly trying to do the foldable with two of them, but now they just made a funny phone. In the end, uh, they don't have a competitive advantage. Their response is slow. And in the end, they are just wait wasting resources trying to copy and emulate the Samsung folding phone. That, that's, that doesn't work. This is, I'm going to put an image for you there. Okay. Uh, this one, in this case, I'm talking about, for example, the case of how Nintendo keeps its position in the market. Yeah, it's a very competitive market the rivalry is very strong within all the video games because they know actually nowadays uh rather than this one i would like to focus more on the cloud video gaming which is becoming the new the new juicy market no we have stadia from google there's a new one from amazon there's a new one from xbox and they are trying to fight for you to play on your phone there's no longer the console video games let me see if i can find something an article for you and i will share with you but again video game cloud is now that the trend no? so how nintendo for example keeps it in the market of the console one well, you can watch this video
And then we have the standard cycle markets. In standard cycle markets, we talk about more consumer goods. In this, say, in this case, consumer goods, they do have certain changes, put at a regular pace. Uh, they do change. They do have some innovations, but the changes are not that costly. So here, for example, we can talk about the, the rivalry in the, let's say, for example, here in the noodle market is very strong. But the innovation is not so fantastic. Uh, but again, there's very little innovations and just continue to fight for the market, right? When we're talking about the shampoo, maybe a shampoo has 10 years. Yeah, they added a new aroma or maybe a new uh, color or new packaging. But in the end, it mostly remains the same. In this case, for example, when we have the ramen, the ramen is still the same, although it changes a little bit on flavor and maybe there's trends like the mala, etc but still they will they will change no i mean they, they will remain the same but only small changes will be there and of course in this case people is loyal to these brands uh, mostly they don't change ramen brands so easily okay very good that's all for today uh, if you have any questions please let me know and then i'll see you next week stay safe